With all the best intentions to keep and stay focused, our minds can often wander and become distracted so that precious revision time gets wasted. In this video, we're gonna look at the tools, the research and hacks to improve your concentration so that you can get more done and be successful in your exams. Let's jump straight in. First on the list, it's the food that you eat. Having a good breakfast improves concentration and memory throughout the day, but there are certain foods that you can eat that provide your body with the optimum conditions to be able to concentrate, improve your memory, and ability to focus during revision and throughout the day. Top of the list is blueberries. Studies have shown that not only are blueberries low in calories and good for you, but they can also boost concentration and memory. Because they're rich in antioxidants, they stimulate the flow of blood and oxygen to your brain. A study from the University of Reading showed that cognitive function improved for up to five hours after taking blueberries. So having a handful of these with your breakfast and then perhaps a break time could make a huge difference to your concentration levels. Second food is leafy green vegetables. Leafy greens are high in B vitamins and folic acid, which not only improve mental clarity, but also help with memory and focus. Leafy greens such as spinach are also high in potassium, which has been proven to make the brain more responsive, as well as a chemical called lutein, which is a nutrient which aids learning, memory, and brain function. Making sure you get a good portion of greens with your meal is essential, and really, the greener, the better. Next on the food list is fatty fish. Now, some people don't like fatty fish, but it is high in omega-3, and this is critical for normal brain function, and it is considered to be brain food. Recent studies have shown incredible benefits of fish oils on improving depression, as well as improved mental performance in people who are deficient in omega-3. Eating mackerel, kippers, salmon, herring, sardines, tuna, all of these are high in omega-3. And eating them in the lead up to an exam or while revising will help you with your concentration. Next on the list for foods is dark chocolate. Now students love the idea of eating more chocolate, but this really only applies to dark chocolate. It's made from the cocoa plant and is full of antioxidant flavonols which have been shown to improve blood flow to the brain. A Harvard Medical School study showed the effects from having a dose of about the size of two cups of hot chocolate increased blood flow to the brain that lasted between two to three hours. During this time, the subjects of the study improved their working memory speed scores by 30%. Also, a study of 90 Italian men and women showed that those that were given a cocoa drink scored a higher in organization, memory problem solving skills, and attention than the group that didn't get it. There's still further research to be done into chocolate, but these results sound promising and tasty. Next on the concentration list is exercise. Now, we all know that exercise is good for our health, but interestingly, it has a huge effect on our brain and ability to focus. Exercise triggers the release of endorphins, which are chemicals that improve our brain's ability to prioritize. This allows you to concentrate better and also block out distractions. A study with 200 people from Bristol University showed that a 45 minute workout at lunchtime significantly improved cognitive performance in a number of areas. The study showed that exercise helped the focus group re-energize and improve concentration, and it also claims that it made people feel calmer and assisted with problem solving. Even if you feel you don't have enough time to commit to a 45 minute workout, just walking around at your normal pace for 40 minutes three times a week can enhance the connectivity of brain circuits and increase your performance on cognitive tasks. Next on the concentration list is sleep. Now we all know that a lack of sleep can make us feel groggy, slow and severely affect our mood. But a study published in the science journal Nature found that the neurons in key brain cells in your temporal lobe, which is the area of the brain responsible for vision, memory, sensory input, language and emotion, uh, and comprehension, they actually fire more slowly and weakly when you're tired. 
So poor sleep will make your brain work slower and this will have some pretty big effects on what you're able to achieve when you're trying to revise and be productive. So how much sleep should we get? Well, it actually depends on a few factors like your age and activity. Most adults need between seven to nine hours of sleep per night and teens need more. Top sleep specialists suggest that you should get about eight to nine hours of sleep nightly if you're preparing for your exams and try to be more productive during periods of optimal brain function. In most people, this is actually around 6 to 8 p.m. Avoid studying early in the afternoons because uh, this is usually the time of least alertness. And also don't overuse caffeinated drinks because caffeine can actually stay in your system for about six to eight hours and that can really affect your sleep. In a study at Hendricks College in America, they found that college freshmen who worked late into the night had lower grade scores than people who got up early and were more productive in the morning. Another group at the University of Pittsburgh showed that poor sleep habits amongst high schoolers also led to lower grades. Sleep helps new memories to stick in the brain. So if you feel sluggish in the afternoons or you're having difficulty in concentrating or with memory, then the chances are you're probably sleep deprived. The next tip is to keep well hydrated. Water gives the brain the electrical energy it needs for all of its functions. This includes thought and memory processes. The brain is 85% water and studies have shown that if you're only 1% dehydrated, you're likely to have a 5% decrease in cognitive function. Students who take water into their exams have been found to outperform their dehydrated peers. A recent study by the University of East London and Westminster found that drinking just 300 milliliters of water can actually boost your attention by up to 25%. Now, if you struggle to drink water and want to add a bit of flavor, then researchers found that drinking peppermint tea enhance both mood and mental cognition. This helps to improve long-term memory, working memory, and alertness. On the opposite side, chamomile tea was shown to have a calming sedative effect and slowed both memory and attention speed. There is a lot of evidence as well to suggest that phytochemicals found in a matcha, which is a type of green tea, not only improve cognitive function, but can also help promote relaxation. Coffee is also shown to have benefits on concentration, but too much caffeine will disrupt your sleep cycle, and that is counterproductive as it can have the opposite effects. So if you are a regular coffee drinker, you may choose to pick a cutoff point during the day to help encourage deeper sleep later on. Next on the list is using nature and the great outdoors. There's been a lot of research suggesting that while revising, it's important to make time to get outdoors. Several studies have shown that nature walks have memory promoting effects that other walks don't. In one study, the University of Michigan students were given a memory test. They were then divided into two groups. One group took a walk around a botanical garden, so one with lots of plants and trees, while the other took a walk down a city street. When the participants returned, they did the test again. Those who walked amongst the trees did almost 20% better than they did the first time. People who walked around the city, they didn't actually consistently improve. In fact, studies have found that just looking at photos of nature can help to restore your concentration. One Australian study showed that just 40 seconds of looking at grass was enough to improve concentration. So just by having houseplants around you while you're revising can actually help. The evidence of being surrounded by nature is so strong that the Japanese government has now included what they call forest bathing into the country's health program. Now, forest bathing isn't about swimming in rivers and forests, it's just about being out, walking and sitting amongst the trees. Forest bathing reduces blood pressure, lowers stress levels and improves concentration and memory. Also, a chemical released by trees and plants is found to boost the immune system, which is obviously an added bonus. Finally, embrace your stress. Although a lot of stress can interfere with concentration, a little bit of stress is actually good for you and it helps to improve your concentration and focus for short periods of time. A bit of worry causes the hormone adrenaline to be released, which heightens the senses, increases the intensity of your focus and increases our ability to handle cognitive tasks quicker. 
Thinking of our stress as a learning opportunity is actually really helpful. That's why NASA astronauts and elite athletes are deliberately put through stress practice so that their brains can rewire after the experience. They then learn and then are cool under pressure in future. If you do feel a bit of stress, embrace it as part of the body's way of priming you for action. Hopefully some of these tips will help you to improve your concentration. If you found this video useful, why not subscribe or share it with somebody else you think it might add value to. Also, what works well for you? I'd love to know. If you've got some great tips, why not leave them in the comments below? Have a great day.